Are you curious about using Open Policy Agent with Terraform? Well, then this is the video for you. What's up, everybody? This is Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter, or uh, maybe I should use my website, nedinthecloud.com. There you go. That's probably the best way to find me. And welcome to Terraform Tuesday, and Happy New Year if you're just starting to watch this. It's 2023. I've changed my camera angle a little bit, and uh, maybe you've noticed that, maybe you haven't. Um, I'm happier with the way I have my desk set up, so that's good. Today, we are going to be covering Open Policy Agent, also known as OPA. And this presentation is actually based off of a hallway presentation I gave at HashiConf Global last year. Because it was a hallway presentation, it wasn't recorded, and I thought to myself, hey, why don't I make a video out of this and post it up to YouTube so you can get the benefit of a presentation I already prepared? So let's dive right into the topic and start talking about OPA and using OPA with Terraform. Now, when I say OPA or OPA, I'm not, I'm not talking about that one, though, great show. Just watched the finale, a little sad that it's over. The books are still going. <laughs> uh, not talking about this OPA, though it's pronounced the same OPA. I'm talking about this one, Open Policy Agent. This is a project that's part of the CNCF, and it's essentially a way to evaluate information, evaluate it against a set of policies, and then make a determination about what to do. And it's commonly used with Kubernetes, Kubernetes manifests. So when a manifest comes in, you can send that manifest to OPA and evaluate what's in it against some policies that you have, and then do some level of admission control, perhaps, in your Kubernetes cluster. It also can be applied to Envoy configurations. So before you load a new Envoy configuration that's being pushed from like Istio or something, OPA can do an evaluation and let you know if you should apply that policy, uh, apply that updated config or not. It can also be used in a myriad of other situations, and one of those is Terraform. So let's talk about how OPA works just at a very high level. So think of OPA as the engine, right? And you're gonna have some inputs that are going into OPA. That's your input data. You're gonna have some policies that you want to evaluate that input data against, and then a query that you wanna submit that looks at the results of the policy evaluation and gleans some information, and that is the result that gets published out of OPA. So it's this combination of these different things going into OPA, the input, the policy, and the query, and then you get the result out. Now, the question is, what format is that policy written in? And the answer is, it's yet another domain-specific language. So I'm sorry if you're sick of DSLs, but we, we, we've got another one for you. And this one is called Rego. Now, I know if you look at it, you think Rego, and like regular expression almost. It's not Rego, it's pronounced Rego, and the easiest way I remember that is to think of a ray gun. <laughs> so Rego is the language, OPA is the solution. So our policy that's going into OPA is written in Rego. Now, in the case of Terraform, where is the information coming from, the input data that we want to evaluate? That's coming from your Terraform plan. So you have your Terraform configuration. You're ready to try to apply it to your target environment. But first, you want to see what, what happens. Do a dry run. And you use Terraform plan for that. So you run Terraform plan. You get plan data as an output. And then you can evaluate that plan data using OPA and policies written in Rego, and then query for specific values that are part of that evaluation, and that will be your result. Now, if you know anything about Terraform plan, you might be like, hmm, is that the right format to send into OPA? And it's not, because the input data that OPA is looking for should be in JSON. OPA loves JSON, that's its expectation. Any input data you're submitting to OPA should be in JSON format. That's JavaScript object notation in case you didn't know what it stood for. And if you think about the way that Terraform constructs its plan, it sends the output to the terminal in one format, but what it actually stores if you send that TF plan with the dash out to a file, it stores it in a binary format. And OPA doesn't like that so much. Fortunately, there's a command that you can tack on 
Terraform show and add the add the dash JSON and submit the plan file in, and it will convert that binary to a JSON format. And you can save that to a separate file. Okay, sweet. Now we have JSON for our input. Now you might be wondering what's in that JSON plan that I can query against or write policies against. And just at a very high level, this is roughly what's in the, the plan file. And we'll actually take a look at a, an actual plan file in a moment. But at a high level, you have categories like planned values. These are the values that were used when generating the plan, like your input variables, essentially. And then you have a list of resource changes. So these are changes that are going to happen to resources that are in your config. Actually, in your state, I should say. So if it's a newly created resource, it's going to be tagged with create. If it's being modified, it will tag it with modified and also show you the before and after. If it's a deletion, it will mark it as being deleted. Uh, and it could also be an update uh, replace where it removes the object and then recreates it. So that'll go into your resource changes area. And then we have output changes. So these are any changes to the output values that are also stored in state data. Then we also have our prior state. So this is the state data prior to this plan being applied. And lastly, we have the actual configuration that's being submitted. So if you think about it, this is basically everything that goes into your Terraform deployment. And that means you can query against any of it. So let's jump over quickly to Visual Studio Code and I'll show you a little bit about what's in one of these output JSONs from a Terraform plan. Okay, this is a Terraform configuration that I was using for my M0 video about continuous integration. If you haven't watched that, I'll, I'll throw a card up there somewhere. And what's in the configuration is not so much important. I've run a Terraform plan and send my output to tf.plan. So that's this file here. If I click on it, it says, hey, I can't read this. It's in binary format. Okay, no big deal. So what I'm gonna do is I ran Terraform show dash JSON and fed it that TF plan file and then sent the output to TF plan dot JSON. <laughs> now it's in JSON format. And if this looks a little familiar, this is what you just saw on the slide. This is the output in JSON format. And we can take a look at, say, the resource changes. So I'll expand resource changes here. What do we have? We have a new Linux virtual machine being created in Azure. So I can see that the change action is create. And I could filter on that. If I was writing a policy, I could look for only changes where the action is create. I can also see the before and after. Now, since this is a new creation, the before is no, this thing didn't exist before, but after I can see all the attributes that it knows about. For instance, if I want to look at the size, I can scroll down to size, there it is, and I can see that the virtual machine size is standard D2SV5. And within my policy, I could have a list of allowed sizes, and if this is not in the allowed sizes, I could log that as a violation. So that's just one example of how I could query in the JSON for a particular property, and then evaluate that property within my Rego. So let's jump back to the presentation. So for example, and, and this is pseudo Rego, I'm not actually writing out full Rego here, but I just wanna give you a little taste of what a potential Rego file might look like. So in this file, we're adding a package called tf.tags that knows how to deal with Terraform tags, and we're importing our data from our plan. So we're looking at input.plan, and we're going to refer to our Terraform plan as TF plan within the rest of the Rego. So we're kind of assigning it a variable almost. Now I'm gonna get much deeper into Rego and how it works in future videos. So don't worry too much about the syntax at the moment, but then we can do things like query that JSON and get any new or updated resources out of that resource changes list. Once I've filtered on that, I can get the tags for each of those resources and compare it to a list of required tags. And if any of my new or updated resources are missing those required tags, I can record that as a violation, recording the resource that's missing it and the tags that it's missing. Now I have some information that I can use to evaluate whether I want to allow this to move forward 
or you know, do I want to kick this back? Now, that's just one example of what you could do. What are some other things that you could do with Rego and Terraform? Well, honestly, because of the openness and flexibility of Rego, the sky is the limit. Uh, the universe is the limit. It's a, an infinite number of possibilities on what you could do with writing policies. Fortunately, there is sort of a community of people that are writing policies for Terraform in Rego that you can reference to get some good ideas. Uh, a few quick ones that I've seen and used myself, checking for required tags, looking for specific virtual machine sizes, and maybe stopping things if it's not in that list of virtual machine sizes. Uh, checking for updates and deletes. So is a particular resource being updated? Well, maybe if it's a particular type of resource, you want to flag that update for further inspection. Or maybe you have some very important resources you want to know if they're being deleted. And so you can have Rego flag that as a... Uh, potential weird delete that you want to dig deeper into before you allow this process to move farther. Or you could just say, hey, there are too many changes in this plan. Normally I'd expect a 10% change rate and there's a 50% change rate from this config. Something weird is going on here. So these are just a few of the many different things you can write a policy in Rego to evaluate against your Terraform plan. Now, what you actually do with this information is going to be uh, sort of partly the query that you submit to Rego, to OPA, when you're evaluating it, but also where it fits in into your automation process. So typically what you do is run Terraform plan, and then you would run OPA after that to get some results. And then you'd use those results to make a determination, sort of a branching determination on what you want to do with this information. So maybe you want to stop the process and send it off for approval. Maybe you just want to stop the process and deny it because something real weird is going on here, or you're in violation of some policy that cannot allow this to proceed until changes have been made. Or maybe you just want to log it as, uh, okay, I just want to log this as some info somewhere and then allow the process to continue for deployment. So the way that you decide that is going to depend on your automation platform and how you want to interpret the policies that you've written. Now, I mentioned that I had the one example that I used for M0, and that has an integration with OPA that's really you have the ability to run any process you want between the different Terraform stages in M0. And so one of those things could be running a script that basically runs some OPA commands. So you have to install OPA and then run the commands. So that's one form of integration. Another form of integration is on Terraform Cloud. So if you're using Terraform Cloud today, you know that Sentinel, HashiCorp's product has been supported pretty much since day one to do policy evaluation. But Sentinel is a closed source product. It's only available on the paid tiers. And maybe you're not super comfortable with that. OPA has now been added as an alternative on Terraform Cloud to do this policy as code procedure. And that's really nice because A, it's open source, and B, it can be used across multiple different products. So if you're already using OPA for Kubernetes or Envoy or something else, you can tie it into your Terraform Cloud stuff as well. So that is the presentation that I gave at the HashiConf Global Hallway track. Thank you so much for watching today's video. As I mentioned, this is just the beginning of a larger series of videos on how to use OPA with Terraform. In future videos, I'm gonna walk through a whole example of actually running OPA against a Terraform plan and doing something with the results. We're gonna get into the syntax of Rego and how to use it. And we'll also get into integrations with OPA, with GitHub Actions, and also Terraform Cloud. So stick around. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna think I'm gonna create a separate play playlist for this in addition to Terraform Tuesday so you can know when new content comes out. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe out there. Bye for now. As I mentioned, I updated my desk setup a little bit, lowered the camera, all good stuff. Bigger teleprompter, also helpful. And I also got myself a new chair. So not only uh, is the view better, but I'm more comfortable. So good stuff. Happy New Year.